Oh, we've got someone in the house, Sue Ann. Let's put you on here. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma right now, where I'm from, but in Mexico, actually. And I've been following you since I moved to Mexico, actually. Okay. So what's, uh, well, so are you in Mexico, the Can country or New Mexico? Huh? Now, I live in Puerto Morelos. Uh, I'm currently in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I'm from, visiting. Okay. And I've been following you since a long time now. So what's, uh, well, I'm honored. So what's your question? Is there a delay? Just a tiny bit of a delay. But well, what's my your question, question is... Phone. First of all, I wanted to do a super sticker and I can't figure out how to do it on my phone. So maybe afterwards you can okay. show me how to do that. I, I don't know how to do really it either. Sorry I'm sorry about you losing your son. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll figure out a way somehow. My question is, um, I've been doing online dating when people were afraid of on. They thought it was scary. They thought I was crazy. I'm 58 years old and okay. being single in Tulsa, Oklahoma is... Um, being single is equally as bad. <laughs> um, but my question is, uh, you had interviewed somebody not recently regarding online. And you had said that a lot of people are starting away from the online dating. Do you remember that interview you were speaking with the man? Yeah, I was actually speaking to a gentleman, um, Thomas, um, Oh, God, I can't think of his last name right at the moment. But uh, Thomas um, just escapes me at the moment. We were talking about that we've noticed that online dating apps are seeing a reduction in the amount of people in it. So there is a shift because the online dating app world is laying off a lot of people. So what I where see. OK, I want to attack this conversation in a couple when I say attack address. Let me put it this way. Attack sounds so violent, you know. Uh, so the reality is for those of us in midlife, Sue Ann, is that we are not on a daily basis surrounded by single eligible people. We're just not. You know, we unlike when we were teenagers, probably everybody was single, right? You know, like when you were 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and you were surrounded by single eligible people. And when you think back a thousand years ago, most people made it at age 14, 15, or 16. So, you know, from an instinctual perspective, we had a built in supply of people within the tribe we lived in. Okay. Fast forward to today, particularly those of us in midlife, we are just not surrounded by single eligible people. And so then we believe that, oh, online dating apps, great, we have access to all these people. Well, it's kind of a false sense of choice because the reality is, is from what I understand, women only swipe right or engage with about 4% of the population of men, whereas men swipe 60% of the time. Women are incredibly selective. I mean, now we could say picky could be another word too, or we could say selective. So what happens is when that woman is swiping right, she's usually swiping right on that top 10 or 15 percent of men who have access to all the women. In other words, the ones who get the most women are the ones that are get swiped on the most. And then there's 96 percent of men that don't get any swipes whatsoever. So reason why it feels frustrating is the men you're swiping that are swiping on you, you're not interested in. And the men that you are interested in, they've got just a bevy of people to choose from. So then all of a sudden, what we find is, um, we find what's known as a paradox of choice, okay? In fact, Sherry Fleming just put that on the screen, paradox of choice. In other words, we have this false sense of belief that we have choices out there based on this perceived abundance through the dating app. There's a perceived abundance, okay? So, and then where it gets frustrating is because people are hiding behind a screen. And when I use the word hiding, that's a, again, that's almost sounds like a victim consciousness, but because they are behind a screen, 
You can engage with somebody and they can easily disengage just as quickly as they engage. I had a woman recently, she wrote me on the dating app. She made, she complimented me. She, she wrote some nice things. I wrote her back within an hour of receiving the message. That was two weeks ago and I haven't heard from her and she reached out to me. So I'm just sharing with you. And, and when you have enough of these on, off, start, stops, going nowhere, it can wear on us emotionally. And then people then blame the dating apps or oh, yeah. blame society or blame the location there. And there it's always blame, 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 which kind of comes back to the conversation I had before. So then the question is, well, what do we do with all this information? Well, first and foremost, I highly recommend a woman put together a quality dating profile with quality pictures. Sue Ann, I can tell you, I look at hundreds, if not thousands of profiles per week on a professional level. And I will say of the women's profiles, 990 out of a thousand are just crappy. They're mediocre. They're very poorly done. 98%, 99% are poorly done. And yet everybody is in the delusion that they actually have a good profile because women are getting swiped 60% of the time. So they have this false sense that they actually have a good profile. Men swipe 60% of the time because, now here's two reasons why. Um, men aren't, how shall I say this? Their threshold for sex is much lower than their threshold for commitment. Let me repeat that. Their threshold for sex is much lower than their threshold for commitment, okay? we And I'm guilty of what I'm about to say. It's kind of like that Harry Met Sally comment, you know? Uh, he goes, men and women can't, or uh, Sally says, yeah. why can't men and women be friends? He says, well, because we want to sleep with them. And she goes, what about the unattractive one? And he goes, yeah, we want to sleep with those too. Our threshold for sex is low. Who we'll commit to is ridiculously high. Right. And we never get to that point because we don't value the other person enough because we human beings are incredibly self-centric. Um, where was I going down this path? I, God, I lost my second reason why. You know, I go down these rabbit hole uh, conversations and rants, and sometimes I lose my train of thought. So again, putting together a quality I think, I think you should start a dating app. See, everybody says I should dart a dating app. If what someone wants to give me a million dollars to create the programming, but it, see, it doesn't matter. The problem, the dating apps are perfect. It's human beings are the problem. The problem is not the dating apps. The problem is human beings. They're the problem. It's not the app. Now, if I was going to create an app, I'd only accept I, people. For who me personally. Go ahead. Go ahead. Me personally. I was just gonna Go say, ahead. What I find. Right. What, what I found. My, is that I don't find that quality person. I've been doing. I haven't been on. Um, for the last year, I've been doing a lot of self-development work. The growing, a lot of learnings, especially living in another country, your eyes are open quite wide. Um, and something you said a long time ago about the Hoffman process, you back to some kind of function and you were talking about the demographic of the men and all of that. And one yes. of the thought of when I saw that show was, you know, you have some type of reunion or because everybody there knows they are people at least trying to heal themselves and be better people. Those are the kind of people that I want to meet. Uh, you just said yourself, you know, you're not totally healed. I'm not totally healed, but you know, at least well, then, okay, so, doing okay, self-development work. And we're yeah, like, let me jump in. Let me jump in. So are you going please. to personal, are you going to personal development workshops on a weekly basis? Are you joining Zoom meetings with um, personal development workshops on a weekly basis? Are you going to self-help workshops? Are you going to spiritual workshops? Are you on a weekly basis putting yourself in front of people that you just described? Or are you just hoping that you'll find that one out of every thousand 
that's on the dating apps that's done the personal development work. And then you're having to bet on you're attracted to them. And then most importantly, are they even attracted to you? If you want to put yourself in, if you want to change your narrative, then I invite you to put yourself in the environment of where you can meet those kind of people. Right. And that's what I've been doing. I have apps. I haven't even really been looking the last year. I know I need to work on myself first and where I've been. And yes, um, being in where. Yeah, but you just contradicted I, yourself. There's a very conscious you just contra- community. Okay, but you just contradicted what? yourself. Okay. There's no quality people out there. And then, but you said, but I need, I know I need to work on myself. So how can you judge someone else as being quality if you have to own your own lack of being? I'm, I'm just putting that out there. Uh, now, mind you, I do want to say we are all on no, a journey. No, I understand where you're going. Okay. But I, I want to, we are all on a journey of right. healing. Okay. But you see, the minute we judge someone else's as well, quality. Some people, some people. Well, first off, hear me out. Hear me out. Mm-hmm. I don't, we're we're, we're talking, it's not, there's no quality people out there. That is an inherent negative comment. Okay. I just want to key in on this. Instead of saying there's no quality people out there, I want you to invite in. I have yet to meet my person. There's a big difference between the two. When you say there's no quality people out there, you're basically telling the universe, I don't, I only see people that I am not aligned with. You are literally through your law, your your words are projecting exactly what you're going to experience instead of saying, hey, you know what? I just haven't met my person yet because that's really what's happened. But the minute you judge an entire population, you're setting your, I'm just giving you some context to consider, okay? Hey, Sue Ann, we have a, had a lot of questions come in I, so I, far. And the 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 uh, reception here is a bit okay. sketchy. Can I send you off with a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug? Back to you, Jonathan. Thank you so Thanks. much. Big, big hugs to you. So you know, I really appreciate Sue Ann jumping on. I just it was a little um, disappointing that the connection wasn't as good as we'd hoped. But here's my concern, folks: the dating apps are perfect. Human beings are the problem. They put, okay, I've said this repeatedly on video after video after video. I talk about how so few people put together a quality profile, okay? Men swipe 60% of the time. So a lot of women feel like they're getting attention, but they're swiping on so few men. And because they're swiping on so so few men, they're missing out on possibly 96% of men out there that could be a good fit for them. Number two, when our judgments about the dating apps or the people out there comes from a place of negativity, instead of just simply saying what I said to Sue Ann, I just haven't met my person yet. That's it. Okay. And she also owned that she has work to do. Yes, we are all a work in progress. We are all on a process of healing. My invitation for everyone, and by the way, I'm doing a, um, you know, I'm, I'm inviting everyone to organically go out to places so you can meet people in the personal development, self-help and spiritual world. And maybe you have a greater chance of success if that's what happens for you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Please hit that like button. Please uh, post a comment below. I'd like to hear all your thoughts. Okay.